Hello, you guys, and welcome back to Books by Brit TV. I'm your host, Brit, and we're back with another video. Yay! First video of 2023. Yay to that. Y'all, listen. I've been gone for several months, but good, valid reason. Like, you know my grandmother died um, July 13th, 2022, and I've been grieving for her so so bad y'all i say griefing instead of grieving <laughs> but i've been griefing for her it's been a journey y'all like um to the point now where it is it has been 23 days since i've cried about her which i'm so happy because it's like every time i cry about her i feel like i'm draining myself like i'm depleted after i cry with her but 2022 was definitely the, the second half of 2022 was extremely rough for me like i ended up going on a solo trip to las vegas and it was amazing, y'all. I plan on going to Vegas once a year from now on. That That's going to be an annual trip. I had so much fun out there. No complaints at all. I do have a complaint, and I don't want to call it a complaint. It is extremely dry out there. It's like water don't cut it. You got to drink Gatorade or something else with electrolytes in it. You can't just drink water and think you're going to stay hydrated because it's so dry out there. But that's the only complaint because I ain't complaining none of 2023. But I had a wonderful trip, came down with COVID like my last day out there. I woke up with a sore throat and as the day progressed, I became worse and worse. And finally, when I got off the plane that evening um, or the next morning, I couldn't even walk. It hurt to walk through the... um to walk through the airport to get to my baggage and catch my ride. And at first I thought maybe I wasn't feeling good because of the plane was kind of small. I flew spirit back y'all. <laughs> and I ain't like flying spirit. Let me say that too, because the, the pilot man, they didn't say, thank you for riding spirit. We're going to arrive at Tampa shortly. We're going to have a good flight. They didn't say none of that y'all. All they said was we're going to be taking off for 30 minutes. And then it, we didn't take off for like 45 minutes after we got onto the, I think it's called tarmac or flight thingy. We didn't take off for another 45 minutes. They kept coming on saying we'll be departing shortly. And I remember a guy behind me said, you said that an hour ago. No, he said, you said that 30 minutes ago. And that's all they said. They didn't even say, thank you for flying spirit. I hope you guys have a wonderful day after we arrived in the temple. Spirit was the worst. But you know what? I probably still will fly them again if the flight cheap. <laughs> You know, I just make sure to pay for premium seats where I can actually be comfortable on that small behind flight. But anyway, um, yeah, 2022 was definitely a doozy. It's the later half of it, going through a breakup of four years. And who that's been taking me out, though. And it's like, y'all, he's my friend. We're still friends. But it's some days I, I was waking up fine. I'm not complaining 2023, like I said. But it'd be like some days if I'm having a bad day thinking about him, I want him to have a bad day too. So I'll call him just to start an argument. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. All right, I'm back. This ring light makes it hot. But anywho, y'all. <laughs> um, so that's it. So let's go ahead and get started. The first book we're going to do, which I was thinking about doing a video talking about Terry McMillan, kind of like how I did with the Arthur Noor and V.C. Andrews. But then I said, you know what, Brittany, just, let's just try to make January all about Terry McMillan. I don't know when her birthday is, but let's make um, Terry McMillan month on your page January and just discuss her books chronological order. So that's what we're going to be doing. And actually, y'all, because I really have not been reading since, since my grandmother passed away, aside from books I have to read for school. This is the, actually like the first book I've read in a long time, probably since my grandmother has been sick. It's the first book. And it was amazing. Like, I think this book has been cathartic for me, if I'm being honest, because the main character's name is Mildred. And as I'm reading the book, I saw a lot of parallels to, between... The main character's name is Mildred, and my grandmother's name was Mildred. Yay! And as I was reading the book, I saw a lot of parallels between Mildred the character of my grandmother, Mildred, as well as my mom, myself, and um, my mom and her, the relationship that she has with her mother, and even my Aunt Melissa. So it was a cathartic read. When I say I felt better reading this, and also, um, I've been watching Greenleaf since the new year started, and 
Oh my God, y'all, the, the way the bishop talks in Greenleaf, I feel like I'm talking to my pastor. Like, he is awesome. So, y'all definitely check out Greenleaf if you haven't watched it. But anyway, let's do the synopsis of the book, Mama. Then I'll tell you guys my thoughts on the book overall. All right? So, Mama um, by Terry McMillan. And this is on fantasticfiction.com. Mama, a first novel, tells of a proud black woman, Mildred Peacock, and her five children. After a violent fight, Mildred throws her drunken husband out of the house on her own in the poor town of Point Haven, Michigan. Shout out to Michigan! Yay! Mildred scrumps and drinks, works and goes on welfare, struggling to raise her kids and keep her sanity. Mildred's closest bond is to her oldest daughter, Freedom, and their lives parallel each other's progress from despair to hope. The book's main... Mm. What is what fantastic fiction has to say? The book's main weakness is that the author apparently could not decide what to leave out. She has also not she also has not decided who her audience is. At times she be she seems to be writing to blacks, at other times to be explaining things to naive white readers. Although the story has power, it lacks a focus and a clear point of view. And this is from Janet Boyerin Blundell. Brookdale Community College adjunct faculty Lynn Croft blah 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 blah. Um, I disagree. I feel like it was her first novel, uh, and you know she was getting her feet wet. So Mildred, like I said, she's a proud black woman living in a small town of Point Haven, Michigan. And at the start of the novel, she is fighting her husband Crook because Crook sees her talking to this man who she apparently had a liaison with back in the day and, and there's rumors swirling about that her first child Frida isn't crooks but this guy named Percy I believe and so they they end up fighting beating each other bloody in black and blue till they both bloody Mary and then the next thing you know they're having sex and as they're fighting Frida um has corralled the children money doll angel and bootsy in her room and you know she's trying to keep them quiet and calm them down because they're afraid of their you know the their kids they're afraid of their parents arguing and then after they start fighting they're going to have sex and the kids is like why do they fight and then do the nasty and frida's like mama don't want to do it she's just doing it because of because daddy so shortly after Frida, not Frida, but Mildred ends up telling, um, kicking out Crook because Crook is flirt, not flirting, but fool along with this woman named Ernestine all this time. Someone who's allegedly ugly as the day is wide. And she tells Ernestine, you know, all his stuff will be outside. She can't do this no more. You can have him. And, and from then on, she's raising her five children by herself. Her oldest daughter, Frida, is kind of like her pride and joy. You know, it's something special about being the oldest. I'm my mama oldest, right? <laughs> my dad is fourth. But I'm my mama's oldest, and my mama, she isn't my grandmother's oldest. But um, but it's definitely something, I think, special between a mother and her first child. And Frida is like a mini mother to her. Like, she knows how to fix her mother's drinks. She knows how to clean the house, take care of the kids when her mother isn't there. Um, you know, do all the things that the eldest child does, typically. And I'm going to say black families, because I don't know if white families do that. You know, I haven't read too many books where, you know, the oldest child, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to say that because I'm sure there's books out there. But I know in black families, like the oldest child typically is always the oldest girl, no matter what age she is. The oldest daughter or the oldest child always takes over um, mother duties. Like my uncle's son, my great uncle, he was like one of the oldest out of my grandmother's kids and he used to help, have to help out of my great grandmother's kids and he used to have to help take care of um cook and clean as well. It wasn't all on his um sister Anna. It was the both of them tag team and everything. So when Frida does her thing, she's her mother's pride and joy. Um Frida eventually goes off to live in to go to college in um California. She moves her mother and her siblings out there. Everybody goes except for Boosie. Boosie is a second order and she and Frida is always in competition because Frida Boosie feel like she can do Things just as good as Frida, but she really can't at the time. And don't nobody respect her because she ain't the oldest or as efficient as Frida is. Then you have Money, her sorry son, who goes, you know, he's like the only boy of the house. And people just depended on him to do a lot of stuff, but they never really respected him or really appreciated him doing stuff. They just suspected him to do all the manly stuff like fix the doors, fix the broken plungers, kill the bats or kill the snakes or the bugs whenever they get in the house. But, you know, he's just a little boy and it kind of takes a toll on him because he eventually turns to um, drugs 
you know, later on in life or as a teenager and he goes to prison for burglar, but he gets out and eventually moves out of California and completes a 180, you know, goes to school to become a, not, I don't think he went to school to become a pilot. I forgot y'all just read the book, but he goes to school. Um, he goes to get a great job and that job sends him back to school for additional training so that he can get more money. He's a very smart kid. Um, Angel and Doll, the youngest two, you know, they end up marrying decent men, not having a whole bunch of children or whatnot. But the character of Mildred was an interesting character. Obviously, well, to me, it was obvious that the author based the, the character of Mildred and Frida on herself and her mother, the way she, she talked about it. But Mildred, she was a strong woman. Like, she kept her house clean. She kept her kids fed. She wasn't too proud for to get on welfare. But, you know, people didn't really want to get on welfare if they didn't have to. But Mildred bought her house. At first, she was going to move to Phoenix. And so she sold her house. But, you know, it's not stated in the book. But, you know, we know history at this stage. And, you know, at this point in America, we know history. So we know that the people kind of undersold Mildred's house due to gentrification. And she didn't get the um, correct appraisal. They probably appraised it much lower than what it would have been or whatnot. So she ended up scrapping the idea of moving to Phoenix. And she makes do and Point Haven, and she, like, she really tries her best to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, and I hate this adage, but pull herself up by her own bootstraps. After she sells her house, it's bought by this woman who turns her home into a brothel, and Miss, um, Miss Mildred gets the bright idea, you know, I can start having parties at, what. Well, yeah, Mildred start, gets the idea that, you know, I can start having parties at my house. Everybody know I cook the best potato salad, fried chicken, and chitlins. And um, I always get the best parties. I can have my kids help me clean up the house. And she started doing that. And the first night that she was in business, like, she had a, a poker table or craps table up in her set up in her bedroom. But the first night she was in business, this is like the 50, 60, and 7. Miss Mildred made $700. That's good money. I think that's probably like $7,000 in today's time. And then it went on and on for several months until the lady who owned the brothel that bought Mildred's old house, her raggedy yes, called the police on her to get her shut down and her landlord tells her she had to leave. Never mind, he used to be one of the biggest patrons at Mildred's little speakeasy. But anywho, so then Miss Mildred, um, she tried to find another way to come up with, you know, to be self-reliant. And so she eventually turns to sex work. And what she does is she goes to this bar across the bridge, you know, Michigan is right next to Canada. And she, um, you know, takes her, give her to give the tricks, a sob story about, you know, she's trying to take care of her kids. Her man ain't none. She got to get all this stuff. And she has a regular client who's this white man and he eventually falls in love with her. But you know, she ends up breaking it off. And what she was doing, it was at the Starlight Motel that, or the Starlight Lounge that she met him at. But what she was doing was she wasn't having sex with the um, men in America. She was having sex with them in Canada you know, to keep her business from being spread across town because, you know, she's a small-ass Point Haven. Everybody knows your business. So, um, she has she she has a job at Ford Motors at one point, but, you know, they always land people off. That's another thing, too. When people talk about factory jobs, y'all, all the stories I be reading, they'll say, yeah, you know, we had a factory job, but then, you know, they would lay us off here and then we'll be out of work for, like, six months to a year. So, we'll go get on welfare or we'll go work in the go down south and work in the fields for a while. I'm like, what? So it was like America wasn't just no great with all the fat jobs that they always talk about. See y'all, you have to you have to know your history. You have to talk to people. But anyway, um like I said, she eventually um moves to California. She goes out there to visit Frida after Frida has been there for several years. And Frida say, Well mama, you know, y'all save up enough money. Um you you know y'all can come out here. I'll help y'all find a place to stay. And they eventually come out there on the wing and a prayer. Mildred rents a U-Haul and drives it all the way to California, but she lies to the U-Haul people that she's only going to Detroit. But child, like two or three weeks later, the people come and snatches up the U-Haul and Frida ends up getting a check to get the U-Haul out and pay for her mother and sisters to move into an apartment. Also, Miss Mildred had ex- what well, this guy volunteered to come help them drive out there as long as Mildred put him on the bus. But, you know, Mildred ain't have no money by the time they got to California. So the dude had to uh, <laughs> wait till Frida could get some money. So he was just living out there with Frida and them, you know, for the two, three weeks they were staying with Frida House until Frida got the money to put him on the bus back. But she eventually makes do, you know, she buys a home out there and makes it a beautiful home, plants her, builds her garden or whatnot, plant flowers out there. And 
Then she decides to move back. That was another thing, y'all. Miss Mildred was a resourceful woman. She had bought a home in um. She had bought like two homes, I believe. She bought a home at the beginning of the store. She owned her home. Then she bought another home. And then she bought a home out there in California. Then she sold it so that she can go home and buy another home and, um, back in Point Haven. But overall, it was a beautiful story. Like the thing that stuck out to me was um, the way Terry McMillan deal with alcoholism or alcoholism because it doesn't ring the same in, I think, in black households as it does like you know, in other households, like, like we, I, I think that sometimes people can drink all day, but they don't actually have an addiction to alcohol. And that's what I was looking at Mildred. I'm like, you know what? I don't get the feeling that Mildred is an alcoholic or a drunk, but she drinks because that makes her feel better, but she's not actually addicted to it. So I thought that was very interesting in a way, you know, that all the kids, well, Frida knew how to pour his, Pour her mother a drink as well as either angel doll had a baby um little richard that mildred took care of her grandson and her five-year-old grandson knew how to pour her a drink but it wasn't like she was an alcoholic that would get drunk and want to fight everybody she was just drink and drink and then you know she passed out go to sleep get up and go to work and stuff like that so i would just thought it was very interesting how alcoholism work in black families and you know what? i'm gonna go look up some books to see to find out more about that because like i said mildred wasn't she wasn't dependent on it she didn't get sick if she drunk but clearly throughout the book y'all mildred was always drinking but she didn't get sick but there was one point in the story where she had a a, a nervous breakdown for lack of a better term to come in my head right now and she had to go stay with her father for like a month. And Frida held it down, y'all. Frida made sure the kids was going to school all the time. Um, she had the house clean. They was fed. Everything was good, right? But um, there was one point that she held it down. Even the way the author talked about it, y'all, it rings true in so many black families. And the way, you know, like, Mildred did tell the kids what she was going through. And the kids just realized their mom was back and normal. And they never talked about what she had experienced. Like, she was yelling at the kids. And then, like, she burnt some food. And that's when they realized their mother wasn't good. But all throughout the book, Mildred is taking um, nervous pills. You know, now we know that she was taking pills for anxiety. But she was on medication for anxiety throughout the book. But the family didn't call her, like, crazy or really deal with the fact that she take nervous pills and then drink booze because like i said it wasn't like it was really affecting her like going to work or you know looking after her kids because she was still keeping a clean house and still keeping the kids fed and still keeping a job but you know it was a study that came out recently um that talked about how black women deal with depression and how their depression system shows up totally different from everyone else's which is very interesting hopefully my own boy from Black Man Thoughts does a video on that so he could break it down a little more. But anyway, y'all, overall, I would say this book is good, um, really good book. And like I said, it reminded me of me, my mom, and my um, grandmother. And I like the care that Terry McMillan took when describing the characters of Frida and um, Miss Mildred. Because Frida, even, um, she had an addiction. But um, the way she described it, it wasn't like, you know, she on the street... <sighs> sleeping on the streets or nothing like that like she was a functioning addict and i don't even know if like functioning addict is, is the right term right but overall like i said it was a really good book and i would highly recommend everyone to read this book and matter of fact i would say this book should be turned into a mini series y'all know i don't like when people make movies out of the books because they take out too much and put in stuff that they don't need to put in there but you know they could turn this into a limited um series like you know a seven part series i would definitely be down to watch that long as by the third part we get the freedom excuse me living out in california and sending for her mother them and we see frida dealing with um living in new york and her addiction struggles out there which is awesome y'all know what i think i don't know if Terry mcmillan has has struggled with addiction because my cousin um ej knows her personal story a lot better than me but i kind of feel like the way i kind of feel like she she has dealt with addiction personally before i don't know if it was on her or someone she know because the way she described addiction in this book as well as in disappearing x and in um a day late and a dollar short with paris i don't know i would be curious to ask her that if i ever get an interview with her you know ask her you know about any struggles that she has dealt with regarding 
being addicted or someone being addicted. Now, I ain't trying to say the lady will dick if she, if she isn't. But anyway, y'all, that's all I got. And I'll see you guys soon. The next book that we'll be discussing is, I think, Waiting to Exhale will be the next one. I got to read it. Let me see, y'all. Hold up. Let me see her, um, let me see her discography, her bibliography in order. Because that'll be the next book we read. I think, um, oh, la, 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 la. Okay, so the next book we actually, I'll come back and discuss with you guys will be Disappearing Acts. And you know what? Maybe because of the way I saw the movies, I always thought that how Stella got a groove. No, that don't make no sense. But I always thought how Stella got a groove that came before Disappearing Acts. But maybe because of the way I grew up watching the movie or reading the books out of order. But anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. And I hope to see y'all in the comments. Tell me y'all thoughts on this book if y'all read it. Tell me y'all thoughts and aspirations for 2023. I have so many. I'm really looking forward to this year. And if you're new, please, please subscribe. And don't forget to like the video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.